Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to download and install the Eclipse Integrated Development Environment. Eclipse is a great tool to program in many different languages. It's really popular with the Java language as well as Perl and other languages out there. What we're looking at right here is eclipse.org slash downloads and you'll see that there's many different downloads available. Now the most basic one is the Eclipse Classic and you'll see that for each one of these downloads there's a Windows 32-bit as well as a 64-bit. So, so the first thing you want to do is figure out whether you're on 32 or 64-bit and you can do that just by right-clicking on your computer and then go to properties and you'll see here that I have right here 64-bit operating system. Okay so whatever I download here uh, make, I'll make sure that I download the 64-bit. Now the most basic download is Eclipse Classic as I mentioned and you'll see that it has the smallest or one of the smallest download sizes. Now you could also download some of these other guys. Um, they just include extra plugins and um, if you're not sure what you're going to be using Eclipse for yet, you can start off with something basic and then you can always download more plugins and install them. It's quite easy. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is um, I'm actually going to download Eclipse IDE for Java developers. And it just contains, you know, all the plugins necessary for creating just a standard Java program. Now if I wanted to do programming for Java, you know, with a web server, then that would be the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Um, this one is uh, probably the most popular one and you'll see, you can see here that the size is a little bit bigger than uh, this one over here. You just once again need to ask yourself what are you going to be developing. So what I'm going to do here is just download the 64-bit right here and then I'll go ahead and hit this download and it's just going to take a few minutes here. And now you can see in my downloads directory I have this Eclipse Java Juno and I'm, all I'm going to do now, you can see that this is a zip file, I'm going to right click and extract and if I extract just to the C drive it's going to automatically create a folder called Eclipse. So we'll hold tight and let that finish up. Almost finished here. And once this is done, I'm going to then go to my C drive and we can see the Eclipse directory. In fact, I'm right inside of the Eclipse directory right here. And right in here you see this icon. This is what you need to double click on to launch it. So if you want to, you can create a shortcut for this on the desktop. Don't drag and drop, okay? Instead, create a shortcut. Uh, you just right click on here and say, send to desktop create shortcut okay and um, the shortcut is on my desktop but since I have this right in front of me I'll just double click on it and hit run so this takes the first time you launch it it takes uh, about a minute for it to launch and then it'll be faster uh, after that a workspace is where all of your projects get placed and so I'm just going to stick with the default workspace here and I'll check this to say use this as the default and do not ask again. And here we have our environment and um, you'll see in the upper right hand corner we have this uh, Java EE and debug and resource. These are what we call perspectives. Um, a perspective is just a collection of windows and how they're arranged on on the page and so um, so that's that's going to be there by default and um, what I'd like to do is just create a real quick Java project so I'm going to right click in here and say new project and I'll choose Java Java project and hit next and then I'll say my first Java project Okay, now use default location. There's my workspace. This is the base directory for my project. My execution environment is Java Standard Edition 1.7. If I have a different Java runtime environment, um, I can switch that out if I want to. I'll hit next and then I will hit finish. 
Now on the left hand side is my project explorer. I can see what's inside of my project and right now it's pretty empty. My Java code is going to go inside of this source directory and in fact I'm just going to create a quick little Java class and I'm going to call this class person and it's a good practice to make your classes belong to a package. So I'll say com.firebox.training. And what happens is that it's going to create a directory structure that reflects uh, this package name. I will also put a main method in here so I can do some testing and I can uh, actually run my file. So here's my person.java and it creates the skeleton code for us. And I'll make, I'll make this really simple here. Maybe I want my person to have a la first and a last name. So I'll say private string first name comma last name semicolon. So private just means that uh, this these variables are only directly accessible by methods inside of this class. And I'm going to also provide public getter and setter methods for this. So I'm going to right click in here and under source there's the generate getters and setters and I'll just put checks next to these guys right here and you'll see that it created getters and setters and if I want to I can right click in here once again and go to source this time say format to nicely align everything And inside of my main method, I'm going to instantiate a person. So person, p, so p is my variable. We're declaring it is of type person. Now we need to instantiate a person, so new person. Since I only have one constructor, one default constructor that takes no arguments, that's the only way I can uh, use that constructor, I'm going to use my dot notation and call the set first name and p dot set last name now if I wanted to provide a method a two string method to nicely print out my person I can do that if I do a system dot out dot print line to print my person to the console. Since I haven't provided a toString method, it's going to look kind of ugly. I'm going to run what I have so far. I can just right click on here and just say run as Java application and you'll see that this is my output. Like I said, it's a little bit ugly. So what I can do is override the toString method. Okay, so I simply say public string to string. This is exactly what the signature needs to look like and I'm going to say return. What do I want to display? Well maybe I want to display the person, literal person, plus if I say this I can call the get first name plus a literal space plus this dot get last name. If I double click on this heading here, it puts it in full screen mode so it's a little easier to look at. I'm now going to right click and run this again. And now this is the output. Okay, so we created our, we installed uh, Eclipse and created our first Java program. I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.